Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel, I'm Antonov2 and today we will be counting down the top 5 best money makers in World of Tanks. So before we get stuck right in I just have to point a couple of things out as usual. That is first of all that obviously all these tanks will be tier 8 premium tanks but this is not about which of them is the strongest as in which of them performs the best in game but which of them will run you the highest profit and to do that I this time completely took my subjective opinion out of this video and to generate this tier list only looked at the statistics so these are literally objectively the top five tanks that will on average run you the highest net income in world of tanks but uh, this tier list is not accounting for any tier 8 premium tanks that cannot be obtained at this moment in World of Tanks. So for example the Type 59 or the Rheinmetall Scorpion that could be bought at an earlier point but are no longer obtainable in game or in the premium shop. Last of all I just want to point out that this tier list only concerns itself with patch 9.18 so if you're watching it at a later point the ranking might be slightly out of date so please keep that in mind. So now that we've got that out of the way we can head in and we'll be beginning at number 5 with the AMX Chasseur de Char or AMX CDC and this is actually pretty unsurprising because the tank is very very strong. It gets a great gun uh, that's accurate, it aims very quickly and is just generally good for sniping. Unfortunately the alpha damage is not that amazing at 240 but I guess it is average for a uh, tier 8 medium tank. It's amazingly speedy, uh, has got great gun depression at 10 degrees which allows you combined with that agility to manipulate the battlefield to your advantage basically and also obviously because the shells only do 240 hit points of damage they are pretty cheap to resupply so on average you will run quite a strong profit. Unfortunately though this tank doesn't have any armor basically sometimes you'll be even penetrated by high explosive shells and combined with the fact that you've got a huge silhouette that makes it kind of awkward to use in some situations and you really have to find cover or somehow make sure that you don't become spotted but your camo rating is in fact great so that can be a bit problematic right there. Because of its very bad armor also module damage can be an issue so you really have to learn how to avoid getting hit and using that great speed that the tank provides is definitely a factor there. Now I would like to point out that playing the AMX CDC very effectively is actually very challenging and I would personally say that the CDC is probably one of the most challenging tier 8 premium tanks to play successfully so if you are new to the game maybe look to one of the other tanks I'll be presenting in this tier list because the CDC can be pretty challenging but if you master it it's very rewarding. Moving on to the number 4 spot we have another Frenchman coming in and that is the FCM 50T. Now I apologise but unfortunately I don't have any gameplay for this vehicle because I don't own it but still I've got a fairly good idea of what this tank is about because it's been in the game for quite a while now and that is mostly a kind of a hybrid role between a medium and a heavy tank right so it is very large it's got a big hit point pool and at least some kind of armor in contrast to the AMX CDC but it also has great mobility and the gun is actually also more like a medium tank gun the gun is actually very similar to the AMX CDC actually slightly inferior if you ask me which is a bit scary as this is a heavy tank and the 240 alpha damage you get can be very disappointing in those tier 9 games because chipping away at say an E75 with 240 alpha damage per shot isn't a lot of fun right but talking of tier 9 tanks actually a big plus of the FCM 50T is that it gets preferential matchmaking that means you will never meet tier 10 vehicles and that can be very very helpful it also gets obviously great mobility and speed which help it perform that medium tank role and the gun attributes as in accuracy and 
aim time are also fantastic. So because the alpha damage also is that low, another plus is that your shell costs, similar to the AMX TDC, aren't very high. But unfortunately now, the similarities don't end there because just like the last tank we talked about, the FCM50T is huge and its armor, while being slightly better than the CDCs, still isn't very good and you cannot rely on it, especially considering that this is a heavy tank. So that can be a problem also because of that, again, module damage and also your camo rating can be slightly problematic here. Still, the FCM50T, if you figure out that hybrid role between medium and heavy tank and master that and play it as a supporter or sniper, very similar actually to the CDC, it can definitely perform very, very well and it's also a lot easier, I'd say, compared to the CDC to play. So, coming in in the third place, we have a German entry and that is the Löwe. So, uh, this vehicle is actually didn't surprise me coming in at number three because it got massively buffed recently and mainly the buffs, in my opinion, benefited the armor of the tank and that was just so massive. Now basically, for all those Russian 122mm guns driving around at tier 7 and 8, they've got no chance against the Louvre frontally now, not even against the lower glaciers if the Louvre is angling properly in my experience and that has so massively benefited the gameplay of the Louvre. So uh, not only frontally but also when side scraping, the Louvre's armour is just amazing, it also uh, gets an great gun with good accuracy, aim time, the penetration is nice and the only downside maybe is that the alpha damage is not as you might hope 390 but only 320 and that is not made up for at all by the rate of fire so in the end you get very bad DPM, the DPM is actually the same as the T-34s while the T-34 gets 80 hit points more alpha damage so that is quite a significant drawback. Still, the elevation and depression of the gun are great and that basically allows you to use the tank in a fairly versatile way, although you're kind of held back a bit by the top speed and very bad maneuverability of this tank. Still, the Louvre excels when used as a sniper or mid-range support tank because of its great accuracy and so on and really you cannot, you should not use this tank up front, right, because it's so slow and unmaneuverable that you can get outflanked really easily but if you stay back uh, then in a supporting role this vehicle can really dish out hell. So I can definitely recommend this vehicle although this is the first tank that actually gets pretty high shell cost still it seems like the Louvre is running a massive profit out there so uh, make sure to grab one for yourself. Then we move on to number two and there we have an American tank coming in the T-34, a tier 8 American Heavy Premium and this was the second premium tank I ever got and I am still very very happy with it and that's mostly because of its gun, right? So it gets this massive 120mm with 400 alpha damage and uh, the best penetration at tier 8 among heavy tanks, that is 248mm of penetration which will slice through any vehicle you meet even tier 10s and uh, that is very very nice to have. Unfortunately just as the Louvre this vehicle doesn't get any preferential matchmaking and the shell cost is very high but still because you get that much of a punch with these shells I think it's worth it and it seems to pay off too statistically. Now uh, the gun depression is also very good and actually, some of the statistics of the gun aren't as bad as you might think. For example, the accuracy is actually not bad. However, the aim time is horrendous. So uh, you definitely want to counter that with some equipment right there. Unfortunately, while the turret is amazing, not only frontally, but also from the sides and rear even, the hull, yeah, not so much. And if you angle it properly, it might be able to bounce some lower tier vehicles, but generally you have to try to get that tank hull down to make it perform at its best. Also, the maneuverability of the tank isn't all that great, and its view range isn't amazing either. Overall though, as a pure gun platform, the T-34 is amazing and I think the most important thing to realise is when you're playing a T-34, you cannot afford to get isolated and surrounded by several enemies because especially your sides and rear, 
of your hull are really really vulnerable and that's where you really have to be careful but as long as you can get support by your allies this tank is definitely a force to be reckoned with and it's, it is just such a pleasant change to have a tier 8 premium that actually just got amazing penetration and i was actually very glad to find the t-34 here because in my opinion it is a fairly balanced vehicle but it seems that it's performing really really well and actually isn't too difficult to play either and now finally we make it to the number one spot to the tank in the game with the highest credit earning potential that is of uh, obviously vehicles that are obtainable right now and that is the AMX M4 Revelerice. This tank similar to the Louvre got a huge buff just recently and the effects are definitely showing. I am really surprised that I don't see this vehicle more often. I think people are, are kind of put off of this vehicle because it's on the M4 chassis and they think, well, a tier 5 tank at tier 8, that can't do well, but it really is doing very well. And that is not surprising because it gets this massive 105mm gun that does 390 alpha damage. That is the joint highest damage on any tier 8 medium tank. And to distinguish itself from, say, the T-34-3, that also gets that huge alpha damage, this vehicle also gets fairly good penetration at 200 millimeters. So that is really nice to have. Also, it fires APCR as standard rounds, giving it great shell velocity. And actually, the accuracy, aim time, and so on are not too bad either. The view range is nice, and the hit point pool is actually also slightly above average with 1,400. If you want to buy any premium tank right now, right, this is the tank I'd buy, and that is because it is the joint cheapest tier 8 premium tank along with the T26 E4 Super Pershing right now. So really, you're getting basically the best tier 8 premium for the lowest price, and that is just amazing. Cons of this tank obviously are that its armor is not great at all and to set it apart from say the AMX Chasseur de Chal that also gets bad armor, this vehicle doesn't have that great mobility that the CDC did have. So also the reload is not that great so the DPM suffers and it also doesn't get preferential matchmaking obviously so that can be a bit of a problem. Still I think that the Reveler Rise can definitely deal with tier 10 opponents. I think it is better than most tier 8 medium tanks even concerning non-premium vehicles and it definitely is the best tier 8 premium that you can buy at the moment I would definitely say so. So that uh, finishes our tier list and just please remember again that this is not taking into account any vehicles that you could buy as part of a special or something but that are not currently available in game those vehicles are not considered for this tier list only such that can be bought at this moment so that being said i hope this was informative to you guys if it was and if it helped you make your choice for a tier 8 premium then uh, make sure to leave a like or maybe even subscribe to my channel. Just keep in mind that making this investment, you spend a lot of money on it. And although some of these tanks are great, just, you know, think twice before you throw 40 euros out of the game. But um, that's totally your decision. I did it myself, although I regret it sometimes, admittedly. So, yeah, thanks for watching as usual. And I'll see you next time or maybe on the battlefield. Goodbye.